right, hello and welcome to this week's edition of uh, Revved Up, the very show that once again comes your way every week here on NTV, uh, just to make sure you get accustomed to what is happening on the roads here in Kampala. I'm Andrew Kabura, welcoming you to the show. And before we go deeper into the segments, I've just been going through a newspaper here, which is from a couple of weeks ago, saying uh, Massacre Road, police arrest 800 drivers. More than 200 people have perished since January. This is a very, very ugly headline. And I think it's headlines like these that we should try and avoid. All right. On Revved Up tonight, we have a huge car that is coming your way. We shall tell you about that car. Most of you folks have been re requesting for that very car on our Facebook page. Plus, we'll help you buy and sell cars and everything to do with the traffic tips. Welcome aboard. It's Revved Up. On this edition of Revved Up, If your headlights are looking foggy, it's important to get them cleaned as soon as possible for safety reasons. Apply some soapy water on your headlight with a bit of fine or medium grit sandpaper to rub it down. The soapy water will prevent the sandpaper from scratching the headlight. Next, use a car cleaning detergent that you can buy at most auto stores and apply it using a clean cloth. Finally, clean the headlight once again with soapy water and it should be clear and shiny once more. All right, now this week uh, on Revved Up, we catch up with uh, a lady who I think is uh, well known all over the city, if you're one of those who has uh, been using Kampala's roads. Um, she has a habit, should I say a craving, should I say a loving for what some ladies find awkward. Uh, she really likes her bikes. That's one of the bikes she's come here with today, uh, which by the way is uh, a 1997 model. It's uh, a Honda Steed and it's 400 cc so it's quite powerful as well the lady i'm talking about just in case you don't know yet it's uh shamim asimu Sham. hi andrew <laughs> thank you very much welcome to our set as well thank you it's thank been you quite a battle me. it's been quite a battle having you on this show it's uh you're up and down i know i've been busy i get busy sometimes yeah. <laughs> but me, i'm here today before we even talk about that beautiful machine right behind us um your life seems to rotate around experiential marketing events uh, which, I mean, what, what exactly has your career been like and what are you up to these days? Okay, currently I work for Royal Way Media. It's a PR and communication firm that yeah. does a lot of experiential marketing, which is my specialty. Um, I do a lot of events as well. A a apart from that, um, okay, like I'm an all-round person. Yeah. I've been around in the whole marketing sphere. <laughs> yeah. And I want to, I try to put my hand, to dip my hand in every little because you never know where the world will take you. Do you know that uh, according to most of the ladies out there, they find you awkward? Do you know that? That they find you awkward, very awkward, that this is your mode of transport every day. Your hands put up in jam, <laughs> very powerful engine behind you. Where do you get the love for bikes like this one? Uh, to be honest, it was from a show, a TV show. Yeah. There's a, a show called The Renegade with uh, Lorenzo Lamas as the star. I just thought he looked super hot. Huh? Riding that bike and I was like, I just want to be like him when I grow. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's where the lab developed from because I have no relative, no family mm. that I can say maybe I looked up to because they ride. Yeah. I think I'm the first in our whole clan. Be before we, we get into details about uh, your Honda, which of course you've uh, awesomely brought to our set, uh, wh what is it you look at in bikes? Because you don't seem to like these little ones. Uh, you seem to like the big ones, the powerful ones. Uh, when you wake up in the morning, if I woke you up this morning and asked you, what kind of bike do you want? Because I'm sure you have a dream bike as well. What I do you look do. out for in, 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 in a big, powerful bike? Okay, for starters, I'm more inclined towards the cruiser, cruiser bikes. A cruiser bike for me is the preferred choice. Mm. But I also prefer a powerful bike that is fast because I want to get around very quickly. Because yeah, 
I'm putting together very many things in a very short time. So. And the advantage is you easily get through jam, isn't it? One of the other advantages of true, the bike. Like, so true. Let, let's get into details about, about this specific bike. She has two. Uh, she has two different bikes. This is actually not her first choice bike. This is the one we could land on today. Uh, take us through this bike. We've already understood a couple of details about it being 1997, you know, uh, being a Honda Steed in the cruise category, like you said. Give us more specs about this bike. Well, um, this bike has a four-stroke engine. It's water-cooled. Yeah. Like you yeah. use a liquid, uh, it can be coolant or even water. It has a single disc front brake. Mm. The rear brake is uh, concentrated. It's generally a very good bike with uh, the fuel system that it uses is uh, one for a carburetor. I like it. <laughs> it has a radiator as well. Yes, it does. Uh, and in terms of power, uh, how comfortable with its power do you get through wherever you're going? Uh, hills, bad roads and everything? Yes, I do. It has a the gearbox is a five gears. So I pretty much use up to number three unless I'm moving really fast and that's when I'm on a highway. Because, mm. I mean, with the traffic situation in Kampala, you can't really drive that recklessly. Yeah. The border borders on the, on the road also tame you. So... Let, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. And, and this is quite interesting. And this probably... Will, I have a feeling this question is going to make her look more awkward to uh, <laughs> most of the ladies out there. What, where is the farthest you've gone with a bike? Where is the farthest you've ridden a bike and come back? Burundi. You've ridden from here to Burundi? Yes. It was a fundraising drive actually, and uh, we were raising awareness for HIV AIDS orphans, fundraising mm. for them. Mm. How, how big do you think our bike culture is growing in this country? I must say it's growing pretty fast because you see there's a, a local biking club in every locality. Mm. You will find one in Makindye, there's one in, in Tebe. The, then there are different clubs, biking clubs. You'll find Kampala bikers, Uganda bikers. Unfortunately, I don't subscribe to any because I don't have the time and yeah. commitment to be a full member. But every once in a while, I'm invited to feature on their events yeah. and I do participate whenever I have the time to. Let me ask you, uh, do you ever be in jam or on the street and you feel, you feel like using this side eye? You feel guys are looking at you awkwardly? I get that a lot, honestly, but um, I also get a lot of admiration. While on the road, I, especially from ladies, you won't believe it. Yeah. Yeah, many tell me they want to be like me, they want to learn, they ask, can you teach me? But they never, ha they never follow through. Yeah. Looking forward, which other bike would you really, really, really want to have in your parking lot? And that's the, the bike you're using every day. What kind, what, what, which bike is that and what are its specs? On any day, on any day. <laughs> I would love uh, to ride the Harley Davidson. Mm. I would love to own it. Right now, I don't even want to go so much into its specs because it's like I'm hurting myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's, way out of my, it's way out of my league at the moment. I don't know when I'll be able to afford it. Yeah. Sham, thank you very, very much. Thank you we for having really me. We do really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Awkward lady. <laughs>
It has 240 horsepower and reaches 0 to 60 miles per hour in 8.1 seconds. These would be high numbers for a town car or a mediocre workhorse vehicle. But expectations of speed and agility come with the convertible name, and the Evoque does not quite meet those hopes. Inside, however, the standards are much higher, with the plush leather trimming and luxurious comfort that Range Rover prides itself in. There is a 10.2 touchscreen interface, and the pricier package options have upgraded speakers, surround view cameras, custom wheels and paint jobs, and a variety of other unnecessary but pretty accessories. Overall, then, the Evoque is a quality vehicle that has its own charms and benefits that become apparent if you can separate them from the standard set of expectations that usually accompany a convertible. It is a distinctive vehicle that comes from a distinguished brand, and it's sure to make a name for itself in the coming years. Whether or not it will succeed, where other crossovers have failed, is yet to be seen. But it certainly has our attention. By the way, you can join us on all our social media platforms. Uh, on Facebook, we are Revved Up Uganda. On uh, Twitter, the hashtag is Revved Up UG. On YouTube, we are Revved Up Uganda, where you can watch all the other videos. We've received so, so many messages from you folks, which we really appreciate. Uh, on our Facebook page, mainly uh, folks talking about the show, giving their comments. So do that, and uh, we connect. Right, so on Hot Deals with Checky this very week, uh, we are bringing you a completely different type of cars. One that you probably should look out for if you are to buy any other car. We're bringing you the powerful and luxurious cars. One of these powerful cars will be on the show tonight. So later on in the show, you'll be seeing a car very close to this, a very beautiful V8. But you can go to Checky, that is Checky, C-H-E-K-I. So the official website is checky.co.ug forward slash hot deals. Go in there, look at the options when it comes down to the most powerful and luxurious cars that you can buy here in Uganda. Take a look.
Welcome this week's uh, edition of Road Review here on RevDub. Now, this week we take you back to 1999. To be more specific, the month of May, because that is when Toyota was fully underway with the manufacture of a machine that would later on become their first truck to have a V8 engine. Now, when it was out, a couple of critics suggested maybe Toyota was trying to lean closer to a design of one of, other, one of their other favorite trucks, that is uh, the compact Toyota Tacoma. When you look at it from a distance, it is large, it is huge, but when you get closer, it's even larger than life. We're talking about the Tundra. Now, the Tundra is uh, one of those cars everyone has been asking us to bring on revved up recently. As a matter of fact, when it was out, more of the critics recently also do feel that maybe Toyota is jumping into a segment to compete with cars like the Chevrolet Silverado, or better still, the Ford F-Series, specifically the Ford F-150. But I tell you what, on the show tonight, we'll bring you the 2013, well, some will say the 2014 Tundra, it's live, it's exclusive to Revved Up. When it comes to pickup trucks, we've seen and heard it all. In recent years, versatility, power and efficiency are words that seem to appear more and more frequently when describing modern vehicles. But not all of them live up to the hype. With the 2014 Toyota Tundra, however, these attributes are not falsely advertised, they are embodied. Instantly recognizable is the broad snub-nosed grille that sets Toyota apart from other brands. The nice thing about this pickup truck is that it does not try to hide the fact that it is a workhorse behind a delicately featured exterior, but rather it plainly promotes its power and endurance capabilities for all to see. There is a 5.7-litre V8 engine that delivers 381 horsepower and is able to tow a magnificent 10,500 pounds of weight and can carry 1,895 pounds in its truck bed. All right, we've talked about how massive it is on the outside, how big a frame it's got. Big question is how big is it on the inside? Let's take a look. It's not unusual to see pickups that boast comfort inside the cab for the driver and passengers, but the Tundra has taken extra care to ensure that it is a car worthy of driving to a fancy restaurant as it is barreling down an off-road trail. It seems that Toyota has thought of everything and more with handy little additions like a rear camping light and power outlets, along with multiple storage compartments under seats and in armrests. The rear seats also fold up, creating even more space. All right, so we are on the inside. We need to see what specifically this car looks like. There's lots of space, but we shall discuss that first. First, the keys. All right, now you realize that most steering wheels uh, have that little movement up and down, but this tilts forward and backwards as well. See that? See that? All right, so talking about more of the interior. First of all, if you've owned or seen the previous version, uh, this one has got an all new interior gauge. A couple of uh, little screens in there for your speedometer, for your fuel, and all that stuff it comes with. The steering wheel, not as cluttered as some of the cars we've seen, but it's cluttered as well. You've got your Bluetooth and everything, your controls, reducing your volume and everything. That aside, you've got a seven inch screen right here, which should help you with a selection of your music and also the reverse camera in case you're uh, trying to get behind in there. It's got eight airbags because we talk about these big cars, talk about their power and we talk about their safety as well. You've got to make sure yourself uh, if you're in a Tundra like this one. Plus, uh, it's got uh, seven speakers. So if you're one of those folks who like their music and like moving around, booming that music and probably listening to your favorite jams, seven speakers in the Tundra, ladies and gentlemen. All we're dealing with is uh, 381 brake horsepower and 401 pound-feet of torque as well. Things like those with ground clearance pretty much mean it's good off-road. But what I decided to do is to keep it on the tarmac here in Kampala. Uh, again, to show you that, you know, the, the relevance of trucks and pickups like this has really changed. With the luxury on the inside, it also means it's a good corporate car. You can park this next to any other luxurious, expensive car and walk into the same meeting with whoever was driving the other one and you'll get the same respect. But generally, it's a very good feeling to be in this car because 
I think everyone likes high cars. I met a couple of folks who tell me I want my car as low to the ground as it can. In these streets here in Kampala, what are the chances you're going to be comfortable? I think if you're driving in Kampala, you want something this high, this commanding, and with, with all these border border guys I'm trying to bypass right now, they feel kind of intimidated. <laughs> so they always give you your space when you're driving in these streets here in Kampala. And of course, what Toyota did with the Tundra, just to make sure you're safe as well, is to put in the brake assist. Because I don't know, but one of my major focuses uh, on cars like these ones is how much are you in control? How much are you in control when you're driving this car? So it's got the brake assist, meaning that uh, it's got sensors and it will uh, recognize every time you're going to have some hard braking. So it will apply the full pressure of those brakes and you realize your braking is probably slightly faster and better. Very smooth, very high. So as we end the ride, we've talked about it having seven beautiful speakers. We're going to try and play some music. I mean, what's driving in Kampala? What's driving a Tundra? What's driving such a big, powerful machine? Such a big, beautiful machine without listening to some music in the car? So I say bye to you guys from the inside. I'll play some music. In such a competitive market, the Toyota Tundra stands out because it is so much more than the standard pickup truck. Yes, it is versatile, efficient, and powerful, but it's the kind of car that everyone wants to own because it is cool, bursting with technology, and does not pretend to be something that it isn't. All right, thank you very much, folks, for joining us this week. Hope you certainly have enjoyed the show. As always, it's our pleasure to have your audience here on NTV every time Revved Up is coming your way. Now, next week, we have another episode, one of the final two for season one on uh, Revved Up. Then, of course, we shall take a break and be back in uh, early next year. Still, uh, to make sure we get you everything to do with the motoring experience here in Uganda. Now, the discussion with the motor world does continue on Twitter. The hashtag is Revved Up UG. On Facebook, do like our page. It's Revved Up Uganda. On YouTube, you can also watch all our other episodes. Some you probably haven't watched yet. Revved Up Uganda. Shall see you guys next week for now. Stay revved up. Good night. It's a pleasure. Next week on Revved Up. <laughs>